Hey guys, and welcome to another um, video from my channel, Buckman's Model Mania. Today we're going to be, I'm doing a uh, out-of-box review of the kit that I'm going to be doing for at least my first build for the HLI, and sponsored by me actually, HLI 40 year anniversary shuttle launch, or shuttle build. First space shuttle was launched into space, I believe it was the Columbia, on the uh, 12th of April, 1981, so 40 years ago today. The, and speaking of which, the um, images in the slideshow at the beginning was the first launch, the, the last launch, and what the pad looks like right now, and you've, I don't know if you saw it, but there is a SpaceX rocket on there. This kit that I've got, the Launch Tower and Space Shuttle with booster rockets, they released it in the 80s, you know, back when the shuttle was big, when it was brand new. And I wasn't doing models at the time, and I saw it a couple of times, and I was like, man, that is a cool model. I loved it, and that, you know, never bought it because I wasn't doing models at the time. I hadn't been doing models for a while, and I didn't do models again until 2000. 11 2012 somewhere in there maybe a little bit no it was 2011 is when i picked it back up and so i didn't this kit was no longer available and it became one of what is known as my grail kit you know we all have one we've got one that we just really 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 want well this is one of, has always been one of my grail kits since i started doing models again because it is just to me it is just that cool it's got that much going on with it it's the tower it's the swing arm that covers the shuttle it's this the shuttle itself it's the boosters it's the tank it's the pad that moves with the shuttle it's a whole thing it's you know it's a, the entire launch system for the really the launch vehicle that came into being as i was not a kid because you know i was well yeah a kid because i graduated high school in 1983 in 81, when it first launched, I was still in school. It was, to me, the coolest thing. I remember seeing the uh, the first lawn landing on the moon. So this space has always been part of my life. So let me switch cameras. We're going to start here just to give you an idea of how large this thing is. This is a side view and it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> and my droid cam, my main camera, it's too big for there. So we, I've got a camera special, especially for this and larger models positioned over my left shoulder. So let me go ahead and take the cover off. The cover's a little bit in rough shape. When they re-released this, I believe it was says 2014 Revell GmbH down here. So when they re-released this in 2014, I snapped snapped it up as quickly as I could because like I said, this was a grail kit for me. I want to say I paid 120 for this. And they've gone up phenomenally since then. As you can see, it is never other than me opening it looking at the plastic and drooling over it it has never been opened not good the decals were curved but they should be okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause real quick here i'm going to move this box out of the way so that i can actually take out the screws and take them out of the bags like i said never been opened brand new kit that's seven years old so I will be right back in just a second. Okay, since I'm going to be looking at individual sprues, looking at the book, looking at the decals, I'm able to move to the uh, smaller space. Have to have the mouse up here because currently my side table where I usually keep my mouse is full of bags and bags and bags of plastic. It's interesting to me that it says on the box that there are only 316 parts. I think there's more than that. But, you know, I 
Couldn't tell you for sure. 300, 316 sounds like a low parts count for the size of this kit. So first thing, let's go ahead and take a look at, like I said, these are seven years old that I shouldn't have any issues with these decals. And they're just your standard basic shuttle decals. You know, some lines, small dent there in the sheet of decals. I may reach out to um, Dana Moss via Facebook to get her shuttle decals because she used to do the do some serious 144 scale tile decals for the bottom of the shuttle. Not sure yet at this point which of the shuttle I'm going to build. Definitely, you know, one thing I can say is it's not going to be the Enterprise because I have a same scale 747 with shuttle piggyback on it, so that one will be the Enterprise put these away and I'm actually going to re-zip lock them and then put them in the box flat so that hopefully I can get rid of the curve that has been introduced to them. Sorry about the clicking from my chair. Instruction book is 30 pages, pretty thick. And I'll do a quick glance through them. They are just they're re your regular Gravel instructions tells you what the uh, parts trees are and instead of um, being lab labeled with letters it looks like they're labeled with numbers a lot of really delicate parts a lot of large parts I already have some ideas I'm going to be lighting the tower at least probably not the shuttle itself maybe a light inside of it but I'm going to light the tower to the best of my ability there are There are street lights here. And I would love to figure out how to actually make those street lights light up. I don't think I can without just running a wire across the top of it, and I may still I may do that. Pretty basic assembly of the tower. And I've actually seen this model built before. I don't remember who built it, but I remember seeing a built one of these back way back in the 80s. Pretty straightforward construction, call-outs. A lot of spots where it says glue this and set it aside for hours and hours and hours makes a lot of sense, especially when you've got this webbing, this web work here or these angle work here, because if you don't, that stuff is going to break. And if you do let it, if you do let it cure, it should probably work really, really well and actually be very structurally sound because. Back when I was a kid, we did the, uh, in our physics class, we did the, um, um, so here's where it st splits from the tower to the, sh the shuttle itself and boost rockets. But what I was saying, we made towers out of um, toothpicks and we put pressure on them and everything else. And I think mine and my partner's tower, we were able to sustain like 250 pounds and we were actually lightweights. There were some towers that went upwards of 400 pounds. So if your angles are right, you can support quite a bit. Landing gear is going to be up because it's going to be in the launch position. I have other shuttle kits I will probably put, you know, build with open cargo bay, landing gear, We've got the uh, paint scheme here for the wings, and it depends on what ship you're building. Lots of decals, booster rockets, booster rockets, and actually the sled that they use to transport it. I still, one of these days, I'm going to do the research and figure out how they actually held this thing up because to me, it seems like it should have fallen over and, or, you know, the wings should have cracked or something when you're holding it up by the wings. Paint callouts for the rest of it and decal callouts. So let's put this aside, put it on top because I'm going to need it sooner rather than later. We'll open the uh, first bag. Nice thing about Revell is you don't have to cut the bags open, they're taped. At least on this kit. I've seen them both ways. 
but I believe Ruvel usually has them taped so that you can actually open them without a knife. And I'm just folding over the tape so that I can get the parts back in. I'm going to go ahead and pull this bag out of the way. The first two parts on top are the halves of the um, fuel tank, external fuel tank. Not too bad on the flash. There is some. It's going to take a little bit of work. I'm thinking I'm probably going to glue it together and then just sand the flash off. Hopefully I'll be able to get away without a whole lot of putty work, but it, we just have to see. Then the uh, solid rocket boosters. Interesting that there's a little bit of rust right there on this one. I can get it to zoom in or to focus. It's not focusing. Now, let me double check one thing on my droid cam. Make sure that I have autofocus on. Yeah, it's focusing. So let's try this again, see if I can show that. It's a little bit of rust down inside there. Sorry about the. Uh, scan lines. I believe this is sides, yeah, this is going to be sides of the trolley, cart, whatever you want to call it, flatbed. There's flatbed, the sides, the tracks, cones for the uh, for the um, solid rocket boosters. I believe these are the solid rocket booster nozzles. It's interesting that this is so thin here. I think these are actually supposed to be two separate sprues when you start building it. And I'm going to rebag everything. I'm sorry if it takes a, a couple seconds to do that just because I don't want to lose any parts. Don't want to lose anything. Don't want to break anything. That, that thing goes in the center. Three divisions on this in the box are a little bit are have different sizes as well. More tape. It's kind of interesting doing a uh, just a video because for a couple of months now I haven't done anything but live streams. I have to get back into just straight videos. Got a few videos that I need to make couple group builds that I've finished that I haven't done videos or um, slideshows for for HLI. Speaking of which, stop by HLI if you're a model modeler or if you're interested in models at all. Great group of guys. Kenny Conklin is the, uh, he's basically the leader over there. I'm not, I don't know if he's a CEO or not. He and uh, Paul Cosney do a great job over there. So, get that out of the way. Railings, handrail for stairs. Looks like, it. yeah, stairs. Tiny stairs. Lots of handrail. I think these are hand railings. I'm not positive. If they are, it's pretty interesting the way they did it because you actually are cutting them straight from the sprue each hand railing runs right into the sprue so that's going to be uh, interesting to cut off. I'm going to take a lot of work to get those because there's a lot of um, points that it touches on and there's two sprues, two identical sprues with the hand railings. I'm going to put them in the bags as I take them off of here now. Framework for the launch tower, more framework for the launch tower. This should go against the back of the shuttle. Actually, I think it holds this part in because this, I think the shuttle will marry up into, I don't think that's the um, the cargo bay. A bit of an interesting piece here. I think that's where the lightning rod goes, which... I believe that big monstrous white tower that was on top of the uh, launch 
tower was actually just a lightning rod. There's probably more to it. Uh, I, I may do some research on that. This cap goes over top of the um, top of the external fuel tank. I believe it may. Not sure if it was electrical connections or if it was fuel connections. Fuel slash liquid oxygen. This is going to be an adventure for me. I'm going to learn a lot about the shuttle that I never bothered before. Those of you who watch my live streams probably realize I have gotten onto a huge real space kick here. Well, uh, not my live stream so much, but the Sunday stream. The Sunday stream I've been working on the Man in Space kit. Built four out of the five rockets from that. Good kit. L lots of detail. Unfortunately, the smaller kits, the Mercuries, aren't that. They're okay. They're just really difficult to paint. So here we have floors of the launch tower. Nice detailing on there. If you can see, you can just see see the uh, diamond shape, diamond pattern on there. <clears throat> More of the framework for the tower. I believe this is actually should be when this these two pieces are together it should be where part of the tower that swings sides from the tower the size of these pieces it could be only 350 parts or 316 parts but I know there's some really really small parts in there too It could turn out that those parts are actually part of, like the lamps are part of the uh, flooring at the, one of the top floors, and so they don't actually have to be glued on individually. This on top is definitely... So this is definitely part of the swing in bay, swinging bay that goes around, goes around the shuttle, or went around the shuttle to. And I'm not sure if they that was how they were loading the payload or <clears throat> what it was for. I know it married up to the shuttle pretty well, and it was basically sealed in there. Some more grid work on the outside of here. Not sure if this is a side or the a floor. This is definitely going to be a side panel, probably somewhere where they, um, where wires and fuel lines went. Some more of the structure of the tower itself, long beams, along with some short scaffolding. Like I said, this stuff is really thin. Uh, okay, for a second there, I thought it was broken. Apparently, where this marries up, where this part meets up here and here, there's another part, probably something like this one here, that it sits onto those parts. Or those parts glue directly to it. Going to be a lot of gluing and a lot of painting. I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but I'm going to try. Yes, I did mention it, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and light the tower. I'm not sure how well I'm going to do. I have seen some people do some awesome work on shuttle models on, or on launch tower mo models. But I've only got a year, and I have several other builds still going. I think, well, this is definitely more of the tower. There's 
some more really nice diamond pattern on here. Diamond pattern on here and diamond pattern on here, which means those are walkways. This, I believe, is at the top. Not sure. Not sure if it's going to be something that slides back and forth. It looks like there should be something that slides back and forth. Might even be a, just a crane. Definitely a floor. There's diamond pattern on here. A little bit of flash on here. Not too bad. Exactly. Should clean that up pretty easily. It's a little thick but not bad for, I mean, the flash is impressive from model molds that are 30 years old, but I don't know how many times they've run this, run uh, kits through this. I know it's not a lot in the last 30 years. I think they should re-release it at least one more time. More scaffolding. Nice pipe there. That's going to be an interesting piece to paint because I'm going to want to paint that probably depending on what the instructions say, but I'm probably going to want to paint that as a separate pipe. It's probably just guess it's a probably a fuel pipe of some sort. I just noticed it on this one. I'll point it out on this part here. Yeah. The sprue, like I said, are numbered, not lettered. A lot of kits I see that they're lettered instead of numbered. These are the holding points, and I'm not sure if it's hold back or just hold up points for the uh, shuttle wing when it's in the upright position, which I don't think shuttle, other than when it was landing, was ever laid down with the wheel you know with the wheels down landing and when it's on the back of the of the 747 this is the shuttle along with the clear parts in here which yes they're bagged individually good I will hit them with future to clear them to you know get rid of any scratches or anything but it would be terrible to, if they have really bad scratches in them already. So we got the one side, the left side of the shuttle. I always wonder why they do that. Why do they cut the shuttle in half lengthwise, you know, through the middle of it this way? Well, actually, because of the tail. But it seems to me like most airplanes, they don't do, actually, I haven't done any airplanes in a while. They might. I think it would be better if it was cut this way, but I didn't design the kit. Here are the doors. The engine pods go, or the engines go up on here. Three main engines. The two secondary, or two secondary engine halves. Let's see if I can get this back in here. Kind of interesting trying to get these back in the bags because they've got a lot of loose edges on the parts as I'm putting them back in there. Pardon me if I wet my whistle a little bit. So I think this is the inside of the cargo bay. Inner doors. A lot of flash right here on this one here. An interesting, interesting little guy here. I'm sure th this is just a generic <clears throat> space shuttle kit. And so this guy actually is available to go out the airlock and do a spacewalk. This looks like the it would be the uh, cargo module. If not mistaken, this it looks like it would possibly be something for the uh, International Space Station. But the molds for this is prob are probably a lot older than that.
other side of the shuttle, and I, my apologies, I was incorrect. These are where the main engines were going to mount up. This should be the front and the back of the cargo bay, the wing. Now, the shuttle, it, the shuttle pieces themselves have a lot of flash on them compared to the towers because obviously the shuttle kit's got a lot more of them made. So, yeah, generic shuttle kit because there's a stand here with the the uh, Western Hemisphere. The only piece that I will be using out of here should be the uh, windscreen, if you want to call it that, the cockpit glass. There's a little bit of flash on it, but it's not too bad. Since shuttle kits don't come with interiors, though, I might just be painting that black from the inside. This. So there's a single sprue in this. I think it's. A, I think it's a duplicate. Mm, no, it's not. I was going to say I think it's a duplicate of one of the other sprues in the last bag, but it's not. So this is part of the inside of the tower. This is where the utilities and everything ran. And as a matter of fact, with my lighting, if I run lights up to the top of it, I'm going to run my lights inside of this core tower here. You can see there, I might be able to do something. It's It would be interesting to get two LEDs or two wires up one of these light poles without just overpowering it completely. And an SMD right there at the top. That would be a really small SMD. I have some small ones. I might be able to figure something out. And I have I have seen people that have made comments that, you know, this is a globe light here, and there was never a globe light up there. It's more of a uh, cone. But I'm not that much into... Um, rivet counting. I build the model as it came. I make the modifications I want. I build them for me. If somebody comes over and looks and says, that's not right, I'm going to say, well, I built it so it is right because I like the way it came out. A lot of modelers have that, are like that, and there's a lot out there that are like, it's got to be canon. It's got to be exactly right. Nope, don't think so. As a matter of fact, one of the modelers that I know, or don't really know him, I comment on his posts, Dirk Pitt over at HLI, and he's he's been around a lot longer than he's been at HLI, has a pink enterprise for a cancer awareness build, and I think the pink enterprise is absolutely cool. So actually, I was incorrect. This is an identical, this is identical to the sprue that we just looked at. So this one, I don't know why they didn't bag them together. This one has lights. This has lightning tower or lightning rod. I'm going to call it that until I find out it's different. And the other halves of the uh, core tower. So it looks like these two are duplicates as well. So let me take one, put it out of, put it back in the bag. And we'll look at the other one. So, looks like just more of the uh, sides of the tower. Like I said, there were these these are the sides of the uh, main tower, I believe, where that central core runs up. Two other sides there, and then we've got, looks like a shack. I think this actually goes at the very top. Might be further down. Not too bad of a, 
not too bad of plastic. All of it's actually pretty good. It looks like it's going to be a pretty straightforward build. Not a whole lot of places where there's going to be lots of um, lots of narrow lines, you know, that make it difficult. Like on the uh, Saturn V, on all the man and space rockets, some of them have checkerboard patterns. Some of them, some of them have straight lines on a very rough surface. I'm actually very proud of how I've gotten them to come out because. I learned, and I don't remember whose channel I saw this on, but if you tape, you know, when you tape off something like that, a really good way to avoid uh, paint bleed is whatever color is you're painting over, do a light coat over top of your paint because it will seal the paint to the model. Then when you do whatever color you're doing on top of it, let it dry, absolutely let it dry, but whatever you're painting, color you're painting over then will not... For the most part go under that you may have a few spots that you got to do touch-ups so that's the uh that's the plastic for the 40 for my um space shuttle and launch tower got a year to build it to be done within the uh time frame of the group build which i quote unquote am sponsoring if you get if you do the group build, I think the only thing you get is as long as you post pictures, is you get a bunch of guys over at HLI going, that's really cool. Mention and speaking of HLI, that would be HL. I want to say it's HobbyLinkInternational.com. They're on, they're on Facebook, or actually I'm a member. We're on Facebook. We got a website, great place. I've I've got them. I want. They're not linked in the description, but they are yet that's what i should do i'll link them in the description the there's um one of my one of the channels that is on my main page for my channel is the hli channel they do a lot of stuff over there i want to do a shout out to um not only kenny conklin with hli but rascal's hobbies he kind of got me into videoing we talked a lot before i started back in november Donnie Dowry, he does a lot of models. He's um, right now he does a lot of aircraft models, and he is really good. Right now he's working on a B-17, and he started it yesterday on our live stream. And I watched, you know, wasn't paying attention to what was going on in the live stream. I was doing my thing, talking, and I looked up, and white plastic had turned green. And Donnie made a post today, and it is phenomenal what he did with that B-17G so far. He is really good at doing the gauges because he paints minis and so he's that he and rascal or eric are trying to get me into eric is from rascal's hobbies but they're trying to get me into painting minis spencer wolf he shows up at the live streams and we're hoping to get mark schumann to show up next time so that's all i've got for tonight like subscribe or not your choice if, you, if i put out content that you like great do a like, do a subscribe. If you don't want to like and subscribe, I'm good with that too. I'm not here to do anything. I'm, I'm far from ever being monetized. If, if I get monetized, I'll be a, amazed. I've been doing this for under a year. It's fun to share with the community and see if I get comments. So at that, I am going to call it a uh, video and you guys have a great day, night, evening, whatever time it is you're watching this. Have a great time. Enjoy your life. Enjoy what you're doing and do things that you like. If you're a modeler, get out there and build something. We all need to because it's a lot of fun.